most gracious, most merciful. Alhamdulillahi wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillahi wa ala alihi wa ashabihi ajma'in. We praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We send blessings upon Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his entire household, all his companions. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless them all and may he bless every single one of us. Ameen. My beloved brothers and sisters in Islam, you and I know that we were created by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You and I know that the reason that we have been created is made clear by the creator himself. And we do know that life is very short on earth, but the life after death is far longer. In fact, it is eternal. So there are people who don't believe this. And there are people who think that we were created on earth solely to enjoy ourselves while here. Whereas if they were to ponder for a moment, they would realize that the people who have already died and they have already gone forth, they in most cases have been dead for longer than they were alive. So anyone who died 80 years ago, perhaps their life on earth was maybe 40 years, 50 years, 60 years, 70 years, or up to 80 years. In the case of the majority, I don't even think they got to 80 years. But they have been dead for longer than they were alive. Take a look at those who died 100 years back, 200 years, 500 years, 1,000 years back. Where are they? And how long have they been dead for? Do you really think that it was Allah's plan or the Maker's plan to say, I will create a sophisticated being, the best of creation, the one with the best of postures, only to come onto a place known as the earth for a short space of time to enjoy themselves and then they will die and that will be the end of it, never to be mentioned again, never to see anything again. Is that what you think that the Creator created you for? The answer is obviously no. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ I have not created mankind or jinn kind except that they worship me, obey my instructions. This is a test for a short period of time. I will decide where they will be born, how they will be born, when they will be born, and so on. To whom they will be born as parents. And I will decide what will happen to them in their lives in order that every single thing that happens to them will be an opportunity for them to get closer to me. Remember that. Every single thing that happens to you and I in our lives is an opportunity for yourselves and myself to get closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Every single thing that happens in our lives was chosen by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to test us to see how is it that we will respond to the challenges that have occurred in our lives. Or when there is goodness to be done, did we do it? When there is evil to be committed, did we abstain from it? These are the tests of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when he created mankind, he decided something very, very important. He decided that I'm going to send to you, O mankind, messengers with messages in order for you to learn from those messages. Whoever listens and whoever obeys will be successful. They will have happiness in this world as well as the next. Nobody on earth can ever have every single thing they want. That's impossible. No one. But we have some things that we want because Allah allows it. A lot of what we have is not because we want it, but because we have no option but to have it. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala assist us and help us in every single way. So my brothers and sisters, those who have adopted the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, part of his plan is they will be happy on earth. Happy meaning content with their portion. You may not be the wealthiest, but you are surviving. You may not be the prettiest or the most handsome, but someone thinks you're really good looking, mashallah. Someone appreciates you. Someone does, and this is why Allah created everyone differently. We can recognize one another. We can understand one another. We can be attracted to one another. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says this. Surah Al-Hujurat. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, 
وجعلناكم شعوبا وقبائل لتعارفوا we have created you in different tribes or peoples in order that you may recognize one another different types of people different communities so that you can recognize one another different races different faces different features if you come from one part of the world you perhaps will have features that differ from those who come from another part of the world this is all the plan of allah ultimately what will happen to all of us we will die when we speak of the last day there are two types of last days one is your last day qiyama one is your last day the hour your last hour it is a small qiyama it is a small judgment so to speak judgment day al qiyamatu sughra when you die your deeds are over besides the good that you have done in a way that it continues after you've died if you taught someone goodness if you did a charitable deed if you built for example a masjid or if you drilled a borehole or if you planted a tree anyone who benefits from anything that you have left behind you will continue to see that reward until it depletes right up to the end of time the reward of everyone who's benefited and the same applies when you have left an evil example you will continue to receive the sin of it up to the end may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us so when i die when you die it's the end the end of what your life my life it's the hour the last hour my last hour your last hour but there is a greater last hour and what is it it is the end of time when the whole world will come to an end made mention of in so many verses of the quran there are dedicated surahs chapters of the quran that have been named after the day of judgment or the end or that which is a reality and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes it so vividly so many places ya ayyuha an-nas taqu rabbakum inna zalzalata as-sa'ati shay'un 'azim O oh people be conscious of your rabb indeed the tremor of the hour is a reality it is something very grand very big the last moments will be very severe very intense yawma tarawnaha tadhhalu kullu murdi'atin amma arda'at wa tada'u kullu dhati hamlin hamlaha وَتَرَى النَّاسَ سُكَارَى وَمَا هُمْ بِسُكَارَى وَلَكِنَّ عَذَابَ اللَّهِ شَدِيدٌ The opening verses of Surah Al-Hajj where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes this end and Allah says three things on that day the one or the mother who is suckling will forget what she is doing she will drop the child she will forget about the child imagine the concentration that is needed when breastfeeding a child is enormous and the connection is even greater between the child and the mother but for the mother to suddenly stand up and start running without thinking of what she is doing there has to be something chaotic happening something very serious happening secondly allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says those expectant mothers will deliver prematurely they will deliver what they are holding a huge sound and suddenly even though the 9 months are not complete of gestation but the child was delivered subhanallah because of the shock of the hour and allah says people will be as though they are intoxicated but they will not have had anything intoxicating you know you say he looks like a madman why not because he's mad but because perhaps he's so confused perhaps something grand something big has happened sometimes disastrous has taken place may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us on that day so these are some of the descriptions of the end however allah has favored us in the hadith of muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam one day a man came to muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam in the presence of his companions this hadith is known as the hadith of jibril alayhi salatu wassalam and The hadith describes how 
the companions say a man walked in. He was very good looking. He was wearing white. He had black hair. No one knew him from amongst us because he was not from our community. And he had no sign of having undertaken a journey. So we don't even, we couldn't even tell that he was from afar. But he came in, he sat in, the, in front of Muhammad sallallahu with the knees touching. And he started asking him questions. And as he asked him the questions, he was, the Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him was replying. And with these responses, the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu each time a question was asked was saying something. And this man was saying, Yes, you've spoken the truth. Imagine someone comes and asks you, how old are you? And you give them your age and say, you are speaking the truth. <laughs> Allahu Akbar. Well, if you knew it, why did you ask me? But this was Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who sent Jibreel alayhi salam in the form of a human being. As explained at the end of the hadith where the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa asked his companions, do you know who that was? They say, no. He said, that was Jibreel. Alayhi salam, he came to you to teach you your faith. Question and answer. It helps you to, bra to expand your knowledge. He asked a question in order that the answer can be articulated so that you can hear and all of you can benefit. So from among the questions, he says, what is Islam? The answer came. He said, you're speaking the truth. What is Iman? The answer came. He said, you're speaking the truth. But the topic we have today, he says, after that, he asked, what is Ihsan? You're speaking the truth. Then he says, well, when will be the hour? When is the end going to come? When is the end going to come? So the Prophet Muhammad says, Mal mas'oolu anha bi a'lama min as -sail. The one who is being questioned does not have more knowledge than the one questioning in this regard. In this regard, the one who is asking and the one who is being asked are the same. We don't know. Allah has kept the knowledge with himself. In the Quran, Allah says, Inna Allah indahu ilmu Indeed, Allah, with Him, is the knowledge of the hour. Exactly when things are going to end, Allah has kept it with Him. He has not informed anyone. He will inform the angel responsible to blow the trumpet when the blowing of the trumpet is required. When He wants it to happen, he will instruct at that moment that angel to blow the trumpet. The angel does not know when that is going to be. And according to one narration of Muhammad sallallahu that angel named Israfil, according to some of the narrations, has actually taken hold of the trumpet and taken a breath to blow into the trumpet and is waiting for the instruction. That's how close it is. Muhammad sallallahu says, I have been sent myself and the hour, the end, just like these two fingers. And he joined his two fingers. Can you see how close they are? So he, if he is the last prophet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what that means is after him, you can expect the hour, the end. Because all the previous prophets have come. Now there is no other prophet to come. We have the end remaining. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about the questions that were asked by the people of Quraysh to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. يَسْأَلُونَكَ عَنِ السَّاعَةِ أَيَّانَ مُرْسَاهَا قُلْ إِنَّمَا عِلْمُهَا عِنْدَ رَبِّي They ask you, when is this hour going to be sent? Tell them the knowledge of it is with my Rabb. It is with my Lord. It is with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So when Jibreel alayhi salam heard this answer, he said, well, what are the signs of the hour? What are the signs of the end? And so he gave a few of the signs. And inshallah, within the next two days, we are going to be going through some of these signs, some of the prophecies. However, when we speak about prophecies of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam, we need to know three categories amongst